Welcome, welcome, welcome to another overrated review, and today we are reviewing the greatest game of all time, Hello Kitty Cruises for the Nintendo Switch. And I've got to tell you, I completed this game 100% full completion. It was easy, it only took two hours, a full two hours guys, to complete everything this game has to offer. So let's go over it. And let's briefly brush over the modes, that's quick play, you select the course, you race people, Pretty straightforward. There's also they have their own glorified Mario Kart Grand Prix mode for races, point system, and the person who ends up, spoiler alert, it will be you with the most points is the winner. And then there's adventure mode, which I'll get into that in a little bit. So let's talk about the Grand Prix mode. Like I said, it's like Mario Kart. And the first problem and red flag for the game that shows up is the sheer fact that the graphics absolutely suck. I mean, look on the screen here. This is this is terrible. I get a little, uh, laugh. It's laughable, and I literally laugh all the time. <laughs> it's, uh, trying to keep a straight face. It's bad. It's really bad. Uh, the characters look terrible. The game really does look like it belongs about 15 years in the past, just because of how awful it looks. And from what I can tell from the Wii U to the Nintendo Switch version, there hasn't really been any updates at all on it, so... There's also, and the level designs aren't very good, most of them involve either going in a square or going in a circle. They don't feel very original or unique. This one, for instance, it's basically just two circles when you stop and think about it. There's not a lot going for it. But there are some things that are good. For example, uh, you can fly a plane or you can drive a boat or a car. It promotes a little bit of... A unique experience, an experience that I had playing DD Kong Racing, which kind of in a few ways looked better than this game graphically, but that's not the point. The point is that at least they tried a little bit to mix things up. You can also customize your vehicles basically into various shades of pink, yellow, red, and that's about it. So every once in a while you get a blue or a green vehicle option though, and hoo hoo baby! It's not very good. A lot of the vehicles look very much so identical. And that brings me to another good point though for the game. At least it has unlockables. As you can see here on the screen, I have five more hovercrafts essentially to unlock. And that's always a nice thing. It takes no skill though to get them. And it's frustrating a little bit just because as strange as it may seem, this game had a lot of potential. I mean, when you have a game that has three options for racing with plane, boat, or car, that shows you that there's a lot of room to grow and to have a fully fleshed out game. This game does not meet that in the slightest though. And then, I must say though, the soundtrack's the best thing about the game. It's really happy, feel good. I don't mind it at all, actually. I kind of enjoy listening to the soundtrack, as odd as that may seem. But here's a big gripe that I have with the game, is that, like I said, you're going to take first place unless you really have never played a video game before in your life. That's how embarrassingly easy this game is. If you thought Kirby Star Allies was an easy game, you haven't played this. This one has absolutely no challenge whatsoever and not to mention that some of the characters actually even during the race they get stuck in the race for example look at the bottom right of the screen here you can see that weird penguin looking guy he's not moving okay he is literally stuck and I've had races where five characters are stuck they're either driving in a circle driving into a wall like those two are right there which makes it even more easy it's, it makes it easier to win like literally they're stuck into a wall and they can't fix themselves it's like they didn't program the AI to render what happens if they get out of a wall they can't back up the vehicle which you can by the way I discovered that you can back up at least and that's what makes it frustrating is like I don't mind if the game's easy it's kind of a, it's a children's game it's not supposed to be that difficult but you gotta be able to at least make the AI move, if nothing else. And they actually found a way to make the AI incapable of moving in the game. It's very laughable. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the last mode, Adventure Mode. And Adventure Mode is essentially 
collect cupcakes, collect apples, go through designated points on the racetrack, and finish a lap before the time limit. That about sums it up, and you will do them on repeat. There will be five times you need to collect all the cupcakes. There will be five times you need to collect all the apples, and none of these ever feel really that challenging. There was one I had to retry, I think, once, and the rest of them I got perfect. Three stars on... And that's the frustrating thing is you do all this stuff, you get all the cars, you can get all the characters, and then that's it. There's nothing else extra in this game once you complete everything. And like I said, you can complete the whole game in approximately two hours. That's it. Two hours, baby! And normally I'd be a little bit more forgiving of this, considering that it's a children's game and I understand where they're coming from and it's not the worst thing I probably have ever played. But there's a catch to this game, and that's the cost. This game, digitally on the Nintendo Switch, is thirty dollars. Thirty freaking dollars. This is not a typo. A two-hour to complete the entire game is thirty dollars. And this company is clearly a blood-sucking company, and they know that people will probably pay it, and therefore they're going to charge thirty dollars for their game where the only real positive thing about it is the soundtrack. Not to mention that it is $40 if you bought the physical edition like I did. And I wanted to get kicks and giggles and all of that stuff, but the joke's on me because obviously the company just made $40 on a very, very poorly done game. If this game was $5, I would have given it a better score than I'm going to give it. But as it stands right now, Hello Kitty Cruisers for the Nintendo Switch gets an F. It completely fails on every capacity, and I do not recommend buying this game unless maybe you're a crazy collector that wants to own every single physical copy of every Nintendo Switch game out there. There is just no other reason to get this game. It is terrible. It is laughable at best. There is nothing good about it except the soundtrack. Whoo, baby! Alright, guys, that wraps up my review of Hello Kitty Cruises with Santo and Friends. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Will you be picking up this game? Or do you feel bad for me that I wasted that much money on what is easily the worst game I have played on the Switch so far? Let me know in the comments down below as well if you have a game you would like me to review. I am clearly down to play any game at this point. <laughs> so let me know. Be sure to pelvic thrust that like button and to pelvic thrust to Hello Kitty if you see her. I'm kidding. Gosh dang it. Don't do that. And I'll see you guys on the next overrated review. I am Bradley Overrated. Have a great day. I'm out like a trout.